Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Some Stormblood. So last time we escorted Monago here to Rowler's Reach where we have decided that we need to rally the spirits of the people of Alamigo to join the resistance. And to that end, Pippin has devised a plan that lo and behold on this very day there's going to be a new Magitek armor being tested in the field, and wouldn't it be totally sweet if we can wreck the crap out of that? So that's just a quest for an Aether Current, which will take care of off screen, but... Should at least just get it started right here while well, we're already here, because else we might forget about it. Hooray! Alright. So now that we've, by coincidence, successfully reacquainted ourselves with the Magitek armor. So they're testing a new prototype, but you know, never know what they might have in common, right? Do doesn't hurt to reacquaint ourselves with mil uh, with uh, Garlean military technology. Never at all. Great, now I have my carbuncle and my mount just chilling on the table right behind Raban over here. You got anything for me, Pippin? Alright! So off for our little stake out we go. You know what this purple smoke means, right? Right. Yeah, it means someone's gonna get a butt whooping. That's what it means. Of course, I can't do anything with my blood gauge right now, but that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. Alright, now we gotta find more people to beat up! Hooray! Let's go around this way. We haven't seen this part of the map yet. Alright, I, th I think we did enough meandering to get them off our trail. Uh, might as well pick up Aether Currents. Well, we're already running into them. I'm not going out of my way to look for him, but... Oh, good. Alright, what do you got for me, bro? Yeah, everything went to plan. I took a long way around. Sorry to keep you waiting. Just want to make sure they didn't smell me from a mile away.
Things looked grim for us after Cartano, didn't they? Oh, how they doubted us. Yet here we are, right as rain, with fancy new toys to put through their paces. <laughs> It's like all my name days have come at once! You again! You know, you Imperials really need to work on your sound. You can hear those things coming from a mom away. Well, 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 if it isn't Garland's little troublemaker. <laughs> I can't wait to see the look on Xenos' face when I bring him your head. Yeah, do you remember how our last encounter went? We kind of kicked your butt. That is, if my secret weapons here don't grind it into mush. Attack! So for those who are not current or past players, this duty is rather infamous. Initially called Rabon's Wall upon release, and eventually renamed to um, Rabon Extreme. Because this, this is actually the first solo instance in Stormblood, and as you can see, it's pretty early in the main scenario. So what happened was everybody got backed up and the servers got bogged down so you literally couldn't do anything in here. Like you would play the cutscene and then you would pop back Get out with an error about uh... God, I, I remember this five minutes ago. Uh, a system error, an error occurred during enemy movement or something like that and basically you couldn't get in. So you just had to keep clicking rub on, keep cutting through the cutscene over and over and over again until you got in. And people were stuck behind this duty for days. And since progress in this game is is gated depending on your main scenario progress, but you friggin' die already. Um, needless to say, a lot of people were seem surprisingly, well, I, I can't English right now, were uh, reasonably upset about this. Now I got lucky and I cleared this, I think, Partway through the second day of early access, and basically after giving up and doing all the progress I could at this point, um, I decided to go and level a bit in Palace of the Dead. Now, during early access, because so many people are playing, the servers are prone to crashes, but because the instance and the overworld servers are different, when one of these server crashes happened, I was just coming out of Palace of the Dead. So I was unaffected by this crash, but it also meant that there was like nobody in this map, like at all. So I got it, I booked it over here in hopes of, you know what, I'm gonna try for five minutes. If I don't get in, I don't get in. And I actually did. So that was quite the relief. You have no idea, but I feel so bad for the other people who were just not as lucky who had to wait days to just get through, because there was no queuing system for this. You basically just had to deal with luck. Now and I'm I have no idea why I'm not using a Abyssal Drain here. I am a derp head. But I have a personal vendetta against this mage over here, so that's why I'm like determined to kick his butt. I don't want him frying my friends over here. I'm so used to having my level 70 skills, so that's probably why I'm derping it up over here, because I'm looking at my blood gauge sitting at 100, and I don't have the ability to actually do anything with it until level 66. What is wrong with you developers? Why did you do that? I love how that one pugilist over there is just totally just taken on that one guy entirely by himself and like nobody is over there helping him at all. Poor guy. I 
I also feel bad for the people who actually lost this battle, because obviously if you lose it, you gotta redo the whole thing again, but you don't... You, you get kicked out and have to entirely try it again. Ah, jerk! I don't like you guys. Thankfully you die a heck of a lot faster than that other guy did. I'm just having fun just drawing this out a lot longer than I need to. It's my way of getting revenge on this fight. On behalf of every gamer everywhere, well every 14 player everywhere, who got stuck on this fight for days and was super salty about it. But I really want to blow up this thing now. Now say stop staring standing in that thing like a derp. I know she whipped out your sword and all that, and that's great, but you're also a magic user, so you might want to back the bus up a bit. You'll be weeping blood. Like, Ravon, you suck as a tank. Like, why is Elise tanking this thing? Why? Why? Why is she tanking this thing? I'm gonna take this laser beam of death away from the rest of you. You can hurry up and fire at me already! Run away like a chicken. Conrad, I see you fighting over there. Didn't expect you to be a mage, but cool. It's pretty damn sweet. That's probably one, one thing I, can't, I find a bit, quite a bit interesting. Because um, usually when you think of, of fighters, you, you know, you, you, you do think of people with, you know, the swords and the shields and, and the spears and the fists and whatnot, but you don't really see people in leader positions that are of the Meiji variety, so I can kind of appreciate that they did that. Like, they're no less valuable fighters, but usually they're not the, you know, they're they're not the ones on the immediate front lines, because, well, they don't need to be. Oh! Damn it all! Miracles of Magitek design my ass! I passed harder stools than these piles of scrap. Um, you might want to have some more fiber in your diet and drink a little bit more water because that that's not healthy, brah. Not healthy. You pay for this. Mark my words, the next time we meet will be the last. Do we want to walk away from that thing just in case? Hi, run and tell you, Viceroy. The day belongs to El Amigo. Okay, but but can we run away from this thing? How do we know the 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 self destruct isn't gonna go off regardless? Like we set it on fire. How do we know this isn't gonna short circuit the thing and blow it up anyway? Yeah! Yeah! Yeah!
Dramatic posing! Welcome, guys. Good to see that my friends get thanked, too. Yeah, but we met that guy before. Nero was like, oh, this dude? But the funny thing is, you never actually find out why Nero would say such a thing. Like, you would think there, you know, there's, there's a past between the two, or there's something about that guy that just ticks Nero off or something, and you actually never find out what that is. Of course, this gear is still all crap, so... Flooding my inventory. Excuse me, I am trying to talk to my friend here. I beg your pardon, sir or madam tree. Of course, I forgot the battle sank me, so my dark side fell off. Okay. We're gonna take the easy way, though, okay? No more walking. Nothing to see here, people. Move along. What's up, friends? I see you made it back before I did. And Lisa has been just standing here this whole time. I love it. <laughs> Doesn't even make a cameo in that fight with Conrad and them. Nope, not at all. About that. Now, as much as I harped him on about that, that you know, that thing possibly blowing up on us, it would be nice if we we salvaged a piece, you know, some pieces of scrap from it, as kind of proof of our victory. Because Minago just telling everybody, hey, we just beat up an imperial, you know, a couple of imperial troops and an experimental magitech armor, like... People are gonna call bullcrap on that, you know? Alright, we're gonna jump over your table. So, what do you got for me, Mephra? We've sitting, been sitting here letting you uh, stew with that exclamation point above your head for quite a while. Sorry about that, bra, but I can only be in one place at one time. So yeah, you may have forgotten who Mefred is, and I don't blame you, because it's been quite a long time since he's actually been relevant. So we'll just say that, because it has been quite a while. So this is one of the people who was involved in us getting- earning the trust of the- citizens of Little Alamigo way, way back in a realm reborn.
so we're just gonna brush that fact off. I'm gonna be a bit too blase about this right now, Mafred. Okay, all right. Thankfully the story will go a little bit more into that, but yeah. It's fine. I'm the warrior of light. We'll be fine. Don't worry, Mefred. Okay, so no new dialogue. So you can't come through here until the story tells you you can come through here. Even though I don't think this barricade is doing much to keep the, the Garleans out, but... Remember the peaks of Girabania, silent watchmen that would stand long after we were gone. We came seeking allies to join us in the fight against the Empire. People who had had enough. People who had suffered every possible indignity, who had been treated like animals, day after day after day. Yeah, so what was the point of the barricade if there's a giant boulder glamour glamouring in its place anyway? <sighs> Silly game development gating. So yeah, we're only three episodes into this place and we're already at our third map. fond of this map than I am the fringes, but I still kind of wish they weren't two separate zones. Um, as you can see, this one is, you know, has a bunch of, you know, has a bit more greenery and there's flowers growing in the fields and whatever. Like, you could still see the Imperial Castrums in, in the background. Like, the Imperial Presence is still very, very much here. So it doesn't have quite the level of destruction and fires and all the evidence of heavy artillery and whatever that the fringes does but otherwise the topography is pretty much the same if hey, fate music you're interrupting the moment here So yeah, it, it is kind of boring uh, in that in that regard. Um, well, aesthetically, I think this place is better than the fringes, but at the same time, the fringes actually gives you a good idea of just how hard. Let me let me, let me rephrase that. Of just just how much the empire has just absolutely just wailed and showed no mercy to the Alamegans whatsoever and yeah it's it kind of makes sense why the people are angry and upset and filled with despair it's like their home is just it like at least part of it is just a fucking crapland now like 
At least, at least here, without the Imperial casters in the background, it actually looks like a living, breathing place that, you know, if it weren't for the unsightly hunks of metal in the background, you would think none the wiser about this place. Yeah, shame that we're not gonna go into enough detail about that lace. Don't worry, we'll get to that later. Okay. Now, unfortunately, because we did Minago's thing uh, first, this is technically almost happening at the same time. Obviously, we can't be in two places at once, but the regardless of which one you do first, and you can technically handle go back and forth with the objectives if you wanted to, uh, neither one shares any direct continuity with the other. So it's kind of disappointing we can't just do the same thing when Amanaga is going to do and being like, hey, we just fought, you know, a hard-earned battle taking out an Imperial Magitech. You know, hey, you know, hey, we, we can totally hold like an arm against the Empire, guys. You know, we just need to stick together and, and we can do it and plan and strategize and, and we got this. We got this. We, we can't do that here. So we have to resort to the, the same old tactics of just... You know, ask a bunch of people, try to, you know, rally their spirits and whatever, and... Yeah, I, I don't think that's gonna be nearly as successful, so... Well, I do have kind of a little bit of regret about not doing Mefford first, it was just utter coincidence that I just chose uh, to do Monago first. It wouldn't have mattered anyway, it would not have made a bit of a bit of a difference. But I do wish, for continuity's sake, they, they did make you do Mefford first, because it... It, it, it just feels a bit awkward to be doing this now, <laughs> literally just moments after that, that victory. But we're going to have to stop here. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll see what Mefford has in store with the Elder of this Village next time.